Hey everybody, this lesson, it's not a lesson, a YouTube video, this one is going to be about tuning your drums and choosing your cymbals. Um, man, it's been about 30 some years now since I've been playing a lot and exploring um, this instrument the symbols I like, the drums I like, the metal I like, the wood I like, and the sticks I like, you know. And um, despite all of the industry standards about tuning, um, I have I got some a little something different for you today. Um, starting with the classic ways of tuning drums. Um, Basically, whether it's like a John Bonham style or a Ringo Starr style or even a Phil Collins style um, uh, and jazz styles and blues styles, all of these tunings essentially, fundamentally, get the lowest note of each drum. Um, that's to say that you tune both heads up, no matter what drum you're playing, uh, to the point where just beyond where the wrinkles and the waves disappear on the heads, both of them. Um, that's the classic approach. And it works, it's definitely a good starting point. It, it works in getting a, a nice, um, a nice harmonious sound with all of your drums. Um, then from that point you go on and you can add uh, muffling techniques uh, inside the drum, outside the drum. Um, we're not going to talk about how you play the drum, just uh, mechanically speaking, how you tune the drum. So um, that's kind of the standard approach. Um, but, you know, after so many years of playing and, um, you know, you know, being seduced by the industry standard of tuning your drums, uh, be it engineers, producers, you know, uh, all kinds of people saying you should do it like this, you should do it like that, which you got to understand they, event, they, they actually have in their ear those classic hit songs, those classic albums that uh, have tunings that just kind of have, have, have marked history, uh, like Eagles band, the Eagles songs, um, you know, the Doobie Brothers, um, uh, James Brown is another one, uh, James Gadsden with Bill Withers, uh, Toto, you have all the hair rock bands, uh, Van Halen, um, let's see, John Bonham, and of course all the jazz styles. Um, jazz being the one where you hear more of a note, so you can actually construct phrases uh, as if they were melodies. It pulls you a little bit out of drum, drum stuff, but um, still very cool. Regardless, erase all of that stuff, everything that you've heard about that stuff, and work to just get a note that sets your hair on fire. Work to get a note that literally lights up your heart. That is what matters. Because if you're playing a drum that you don't like how it sounds, yet it meets what the producer wants, you're going to struggle your butt off trying to get you on the drums. Um, having said that, uh, I like Premier drums, I'm with Premier, I like Pisces cymbals, I'm with Pisces. It has taken me years, decades, to get rid of all of those conditions, conditionings, of alloys and drums and heads to finally find what sets my hair on fire when I play. That 
note right there. Obviously, the phone doesn't get that note as it is in this room, but that note on this drum literally makes all of the hair on my body stand up. Uh, that's what you want. You want it in your snare drum, in your toms, in your cymbals. Pisces cymbals, through the years I've tried a thousand different kinds of cymbals, thousand different kinds of, no, there's not a thousand alloys, but all, all the alloys from uh, NS12 nickel cymbals to uh, bronze cymbals to uh, B8 cymbals and B8 Pisces cymbals just make, they just work so well for me. They ignite something in me. And I love to play them. And same thing with the drums. These premier drums are just fabulous. You know, they do something. Um, and that's what you want. So regardless of what the producer says or the, or, or, or you know, I know that there's that, that, that fine line we have to compromise but nowadays, engineering is so powerful that no matter what note you have, they can modify it to get it to fit into the style that they want. Jeff Porcaro, notably, was known for being very, very um, stubborn about his sound. And uh, he would tune all of his drums open. That is to say, there would be a lot of resonance. Um, the reverb would happen. And it was up to the engineer to either gate that or compress it and work it into the style of the song. Uh, but he would always say, I don't care. This is how the drum makes me play. That's what I'm going to tune it to. So you see a lot of people say, uh, they might criticize you on your tunings. They might say, do this, do that. But at the same time, you have engineers come out and say all of these different uh, uh, effects that they can use to make your snare drum sound like any snare drum. So, and at the end of the day, what you need to do is tune your drums to a place, to a note that literally makes your hair stand straight up. Um, having said that, more of more from a personal level um some of the let's say the two most important notes that you have to get working which is pretty much the center of everything else is the bass drum and the snare drum the interaction of these two is crucial it's unbelievably important for your phrasing uh, through any style, be it country, pop, rock, jazz, funk, soul, reggae, anything. These two, this is where the expression um, happens a lot. And the toms are used for accompaniment or for um, fills. But driving through the song... It's a lot of snare bass stuff. So these two notes have to work for you. Um, having said that, you know, some people will actually go in and, and tune these two notes to a note. Um, you can do that. It's an easy way, not initially, but it's an easy way afterwards to, uh, to zero in on the note that you want. But we're not just talking about notes when we talk about tuning. We're talking about also the effect that it has on you. You are the first person that, these, that this instrument comes in contact with when you play it. And so if, these, if the effect of this instrument is not making you literally catch on fire when you play, you're, you haven't found the right tuning. Um, as far as I'm concerned, B8s make my hair stand on fire. They just make, they just light me up. Um, Pisces. Pisces to me are the best symbols in the world. Um, and they master B8 alloy. Um, uh, drums, these premier drums, phew, 
These Janisa, these are Janisa maples. Oh my lord, they are. I could open them up and literally feel like I'm gonna blow all these walls down in this studio. Um, I have tuned them to the space within this studio for my ears, not for the phone, not for the microphones per se, but for my ears, um, because that is what's important when you play. They have to excite you first. Then everything else um, reacts and adjusts to that sound. So maybe you not, maybe you won't record as hot. Uh, maybe you'll add effects to to control the reverb or the resonance or whatever you want. You know. Um, but these premier drums, premier Gen, uh, Genisa maples are pff, explosive. Amazing. Um, snare drums. I have, I'm looking at them right now, they're right in front of you, you can't see them. Uh, <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight drums here. Most of them are metal, uh, different alleys, steel and aluminum. Um, and they're awesome. I love them. And one of my workhorse two of my workhorse snares um, are in steel. One of them was a World Max and the other one was a, the classic Premier 1026, which is basically um, Premier's uh, response to uh, John Bonham's Ludwig snare. And it's colossal, that snare. Um, I like, after experiencing all of that stuff, and I also have a custom-made Rogers Keller shell from the 1970s. It's just sick. Um, Tom Red Badge, Ludwig, Ludwig Acrylite, uh, Vintage Pearl, one of the first Pearl steel snares. Uh, I also have a Slingerman uh, uh, studio model out of aluminum. It's basically like an Acrylite. Uh, I have a Vistalite uh, blue Vistalite snare, bottom style. Um, I don't know if I mentioned Tom Red Badge, which is a brick. Um, all of these snares are are awesome, but for me, this is a custom snare I built myself, and I have its big brother over here. Um, this snare would be like, I don't know, the Lamborghini, and that one would be like a muscle car truck. You know, it's crazy. It's 15 inch, and this one is... 13 inch, they're both in brass. Um, they are literally just my favorite snares of all time. Um, the brass is real thin, and um, I don't know if you haven't ever, if you haven't tried brass drums, I highly recommend exploring what it's like. It doesn't have to be thick brass, um, thin brass works wonderfully. Um, there's just some kind of equilibrium that happens between the snare, the snare sound, the ring, the head sound, um, the resonance, the reverb, uh, the rim click, the rolls. All this stuff just kind of finds a, a really wonderful, harmonious thing with brass for me. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's going to be for you. The point of tuning drums is to find you. Find what makes you light on fire. There's a phrase in the industry that says, a drum is a drum is a drum. Yes and no. A drum is a drum is a drum means that you can basically take any drum and get it to sound harmonious. Um, typically, this is with the Ringo Starr, John Bonham up style, uh, where uh, top head and bottom head find a position on the drum that's just beyond where the wrinkles and the waves stop. You tune it just past those levels. But um, it doesn't mean that that drum is going to literally ignite you on fire. 
You got to find those drums. You got to find it in the bass drum. You have to find it in the toms. You have to find it in the ba in in uh, the snare drum. Everything you play, you have to find it in the cymbals. When you hit a cymbal, that note, which you are not hearing properly on the phone, doesn't matter, but that note has to ignite something in you. It has to say, play me again. It, you want a symbol that literally sets you on fire inside, that makes you want to play. And when you work yourself up to an environment that where you are literally surrounded by everything that lights you up. You, the world might never see you ever again because you are literally going to want to sit there and just play over and over and over again. And you have, if you have the courage to choose your instruments, choose your tunings, choose your alloys based on that criteria, you are going to discover something about the instrument, something about you that you have never heard of ever before. Um, and at that point, it's all about courage to share that with the world. The world does not need another compressed drum set, another gated drum set, another drum set that sounds like every other drum set in the world. The world needs to, to hear you, what your what ignites you, what sets you on fire, what makes you want to play. That's what the industry needs. And I understand, I mean, I'm in kind of a luxury, luxurious position where I don't depend on producers and um, record labels to tell me what to do. I'm in a band. Uh, and when I play, I, I have a label, but nobody tells me how to tune my drums and uh, and how to play. And I've worked hard to get to that position uh, with the friends that I played. I've also sacrificed a lot to not play with people that do that to me. Um, and lo and behold, when they allow me to do that, it works really well. Because at the end of the night, at a concert, on a record, in a recording. What is finally, what is actually transmitted? You. You are the thing that is most important on this instrument. You. It's not the sound of the instrument alone. The sound is there. You choose the sounds that set you on fire. But it's you that's important. So if your drums sound this way or that way or whatever way they sound, you're going to have critics that say, that sounds like crap, that sounds good, I like that, I don't like that. Who gives a crap? Because actually the people that are going to buy your album, the people that are going to listen to you play, they're not listening to you or buying your album because they like your drums. They're doing those things. They're spending that money because they like to hear you play. They want to hear what you say. And what you say is, is beautiful. What you say, it sounds... It, it's coming from a real person, not a robot. So... I mean, that's the, that's the thing. And you know what? You'd be surprised how hard it is to have the courage to show somebody, first of all, to tune your drums and to choose your cymbals in a manner that turns you on, that literally sets your hair on fire. It takes a tremendous amount of courage. Like some other stuff in the world. Um, if you have that courage, you will see that if you can surround yourself with stuff, with tunings and symbols that literally set your hair on fire, 
all of those criticisms, all of that garbage in the industry, it will evaporate. Because none of that will replace the feeling that you get when you play a drum that literally sets your hair on fire. Literally moves your heart. Literally just gives you goosebumps. That thing will counteract, will um, destroy all of that criticism. It will overwhelm that stuff to the point where you won't care at all. Because you'll just sit down and play basically almost like a kid and just be in love with what's around you. So I know some of you probably were here. You came here because you wanted to learn how to tune. I have a video like that. You can find a thousand videos like that. And some of you are probably not satisfied because I didn't go into actually the tuning of the head. But that's a mechanical approach that's a mechanical subject. You'll get there. This video was not about that. When you, when you achieve that basic mechanical thing, that standard, that's just, it's not even the beginning. It's the introduction the starting point, the real goal is to get the instrument to make, get the instrument to a tuning, get your cymbals the way you want, the ones you want, with the sticks, etc., to a place that just makes you go berserk with joy. That's it. So, I hope this helps some of you out there. Um, it's the way I play and the way I tune. And, you know, once you get to this tuning, you'll never go back. Because it just literally, when you figure out what note, what resonance, what kind of thing makes you just go crazy in love for the instrument, no matter what producer says what he says, she says about anything... It doesn't matter. It's it's like blind love, you know? Like when they say love is blind. That's what you would become. Just, you would be so overwhelmed by the joy that you're getting back because you have literally, not programmed because it's not a machine, but you have tuned the instrument to your ear. You have chosen the symbols to your ear. You have... Uh, Chose your sticks that work with your ear, that don't get in the way of what you already set up, drums and cymbals, that make your ear literally cry with joy. So, I hope this helps you out there on your quest to find um, your joy with this beautiful instrument. Ciao.